All right, warning graphic. If you're going to look away, look away now. I have cleared my beaver uh, beaver pelt off the floor. There's still blood coming off of it. You can see some blood there, but I got it. Uh, that is a nice prime pelt. It's still soaking wet, but I had to wash it yesterday, so I'll brush it out. And uh, there's my got my belly wedge in. Don't forget the belly wedge. Not the nicest belly wedge. Probably do something nice with the legs, but uh yeah yeah you know at some point you know when do you say when just time to move on but i always try to do but they're getting better like my mink's not too bad i got to get wire for the tails the best thing is wire mesh and then you don't have to put the pins in the tail and you can flatten it out but try to make sure you get the 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 fur off the tail is uh pelt or this the flesh as much as possible i got a pin right up to here you can see and uh, the idea is so that air can get in there so it can uh, can uh, definitely i'm gonna go easy because this pelt okay just the pelt and the meat and all that on it is still about a net 10 15 pounds that's how this beaver 65 pounds of beaver 10 15 pounds of it is a uh, pelt so i'm gonna let this really really dry well so i don't think i'll be fleshing it today i'd like to i might start it just to lighten it up uh but I definitely want it sized today, so, and then uh, we'll get it, uh, well, I'll just put that there for now, See, just in case it drips anymore, I want to see if there's any blood dripping off of it, uh, there was so much blood on the pelt that I was worried about it staining, like, uh, up here, which looks good, all the blood seemed to come off the tail and everything like that, um, so again, I won't be skinning it that way ever again, just it's too messy even if i could get faster at it it's you know uh, i i don't want it to, i don't want the uh i don't want that that uh bl the blood on the pelt as much as possible i mean you try to take as much care to not get blood on the pelt because it stains and there's always a little bit that stains that you can't get out and then that'll devalue uh, i was going over the fur prices again last night i went back to uh, 2002 and uh the beaver prices are higher now than what they were in 2002 but some of the other stuff was a lot higher than what it is now and then i think 2013 or 2014 or 2012 whichever i was on the fur harvesters auction and uh, you can go back right back to 2002 and all the all the auctions and there's usually three or four auctions a year now there's only i think two um and the two big auctions are basically the big one is in helsinki finland and uh that's where you make your money um but where you get kind of screwed over a little bit is getting your first out to auction on time and what delays that is drying time so you catch early furs they're always going to make the the good auction you catch good good furs it's like you know you only have a few weeks to to let the pelt dry and if it's not dry enough you can't you know you can't send it because it's going to shrink and you know it's going to rot and all kinds of bad things are going to happen so what you want to do is make sure your pelts are as dry as possible so when you send them out now speaking of drying when i get the size of this beaver which i'm going to be working on my beaver board i'll probably do that this evening when i get back i think i'm going to Get out on the trap line there uh, early today get those get these things fixed up i want to be out by noon yesterday it was like a eight or nine hour day just doing all kinds of, i built rome yesterday so i want to see if i could do it again today uh so i'm not going to flush that beaver today i'm still good for another day anyway he's been skinned for about two days now because i can always freeze him outside so the idea is to let him completely dry once he's dry i'll get him on the board but the thing is is the beaver stretchers that I made, okay, there's my board right there. I just want to show you this real quick because these things, uh, I, you can buy wire hoops and I, you get mixed emotions on anything. You know why I like it for this and I don't like it for that. The wire hoops are okay for the small beaver, but for the big beavers, they tend to not be strong enough and whatever. But I got it. Let's see if we can pull one out here. So you can really see a good size one here. Just so you can see what you're up against. And... Uh, I also, like I say, I got my my new kind of fur shed set up, formerly a turkey coop. But this one might be probably about the, I won't know until I spread them out, but it's either going to be this one or one size up. 
So this one's still pretty sturdy. You can see how I made it, uh, but I'm gonna take it to the next level. The reason why these are so crude is that I made them uh, you know, like skin the beaver, flesh the beaver all in one night and then build one of these. So we're talking like a nine hour day, eight, eight nine hours, seven hours, whatever. Now mind you, at the height of it, I was skinning a beaver in about 45 minutes and fleshing them in about an hour. Uh, once I get going, I'm starting to get into that octane go, go, go mode. It, it, it really is hard to, uh, explain to people how labor intensive this is because it's like from the more, from the time you get up in the morning, if you're going to be trapping, all you do is this, 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 it's like, you got to pace yourself on everything and everything gets harder as the season goes. The snow gets deeper. Uh, I'm doing everything by foot. I'm doing it the way they did it in the 1700s, you know what I mean? But the only advantage I got is that, uh, um, what are, no, at least they had sleighs and horses. I'm doing it, I'm doing like in the 1500s. This is how you trapped in the 50s. No, well, they even had horses. I'm doing it the hard way. I'm doing it the poor man's hard way. I don't have a snowmobile. I don't have a, access to a four-wheeler that I could, you know, like I don't want to use my dad's stuff. I, I'm one of those people, I don't like boring people's stuff because... Everything I have, every person around here is the same. Everything's broken, breaking, or about to break down, and it breaks down as soon as you borrow it. And that's, and of course, when you have to replace it, when you got no money to replace, you know, um, yeah, that becomes a bit of a problem. So I got to do it the hard way uh, for now. So that's this season, you know what I mean? Uh, but the thing is, is I've got money sitting here, hopefully lots. We'll see. We'll see. That's a really nice coon. So that, that, that should fetch a good dollar for, for a coon. I'm going to take these all out. Uh, why they're in here tonight is, uh, or today is, again, I'm just kind of checking their condition. Left them in here overnight. Again, it's a little bit smelly in here. You don't really want to be leaving your pelts in the, in the house if you can help it. Because um, I, I skin these things outside. I flush them outside, right? So it's in the cold. It's very cold on your hands when you're working with these things. I find skinning is worse because, you, you know, my, my hands right now are just like grappling. Ah, oh, they're so rough, uh, especially dealing with this guy. So, you know, if you have a nice heated area, you can work on this and take your time. You don't care. But when you're outside and it's cold and it's like you're just uncomfortable all the time as a trapper. Uh, so there's that, getting used to that. And that's hard to motivate yourself to stay uncomfortable. It really is. Uh, because you're always cold. You're wet all the time. Your clothes is all wet. Everything smells bad. <laughs> There's just like really... There doesn't seem to be a silver lining to this kind of a job. But for some reason, people like doing it. And I do like doing it. I, I got to be honest. There's that connection with nature that... Um, the, that, the adventure part of it, the always learning something, the stuff you see, you know, the animals. They're, the rewards are kind of strange, but they're, they're rewards nonetheless. So what I want to do is let these guys kind of dry a little bit more in here. I'm going to drill holes on the very tops, of, or I guess technically that would be the bottoms of the boards, right here so I could just throw a wire. I know you can put hooks on them, you can do whatever, uh, but I want a hole in the, in the boards anyway, even if I do decide to go with hooks to hang them, because the board, when you go to take the pelt off sometimes, especially the otters, they can be really, really tough to take off sometimes. If you have a hole in the board, you could put a nail on the wall somewhere and you just hook on that and it gives you more pull and then you don't have to really reef on on the pelt as much so that's a good little tip for you there uh, i've seen somebody else doing it i was like oh geez that's slick especially when you get to these little guys here you don't want to really pull out like my little mink there you don't want to pull on them too hard or martin or whatever because they're like paper right beavers uh let's talk about this stretcher before i get out there and get going if you want to see a beaver drive fast again like i say time is of the essence to get the furs out to auction is the longer it takes you to get them onto the board, the longer it's going to take to dry. Because you're looking at a couple of weeks for it to really dry. Um, I don't remember my drying times. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have to research it again. But, you know, where it's safe to pull things off the boards. Uh, I'm going to see what everybody else is doing. I used to know. Again, but it's been, uh, you know, a couple of years since I've been doing this. But you can see, the, you know, there's... Uh, you know, not bad for a guy who's like really pissed poorly set up and uh, getting getting into it late. So there's four otters, one mink, one raccoon, very fresh, <laughs> and one fresh beaver. So that's that's not bad. There's a bit of money there. Um, so theoretically, if I'm just going with the rock bottom prices, 
we'll say roughly about 25 a beaver probably about six bucks for the raccoon and probably six bucks for the mink and probably 25 for the beaver at rock bottom prices however i'm in the great land of canada stan and up here our furs tend to especially like that raccoon is not going to be a rock bottom raccoon there's except for the bite marks on the butt there's really no and it's under the underneath where the fur isn't really graded that's a pretty prime raccoon so he might get i don't want to say 40 dollars, but potentially uh that mink that mink is prime i don't want to say that mink's going to get me top dollars but anywhere uh, probably about 25 30 bucks is a potential but i say it's probably going to be somewhere in the teens maybe like 15 bucks or something just my hunch uh just because of you know the tail or whatever the otters i think each otter is probably going to average probably around 60. so i think one's probably my hunch is this one's going to go for 100 100 plus uh just because this one if it wasn't damaged that one's probably going to go for about 50 or 60 or maybe 40 because of the damage otherwise it would probably go for about 85 100 that guy's gonna because he's small he's probably the most prime but because he's small he's probably going to go for around 80 just just 60 to 80 60 to 80 for sure uh this one uh probably 40 to 60 because that's the early one right so that's my guess uh just going by averages of what i got before this is going to be a hundred dollar beaver if uh as long as there's no blood stains uh, uh, you know and it's really puffed out really because it's a, probably an extra extra large uh, i don't think it's a triple extra large but 